Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can everyone see me? Okay. No, it's a blank screen. Is that Joyce talking? No, who's talking? Yes, we can see you now. Great. Can you hear me too? Yes, that as well. Thank you all. It's um, Joyce. It's I think we have a quorum nine o'clock if you want to get started. Sure, let's go ahead. Maurice, are you able to pull the slides? There you go. Maurice, it, I don't see the slides. No, I just see your. We don't see the slides. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oops. Let me rectify that situation. There we go. You should now. All 
Right. Madam Chair, should I go ahead and read the preamble? Yes, let's go ahead. Okay. Great. I want to welcome everyone to the Cleveland Planning Commission. Um, I'll go ahead and read the preamble so that we're all on the same page about how this meeting will be conducted. In compliance with notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law and section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting has had the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. For those who are call-in users, you can unmute by using star six. Thank you. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube. All requests to speak on a particular matter via our website and email have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comments on a particular matter. Madam Chair, I'll call the roll. Thank you. Um, Michael, it, it, you're a little bit um, voices low. Is there any chance you can turn your volume up? Absolutely. Hope that's better. Yep. Thank you. Downing. Present. Booker. Present. Hurry. Present. Trey Scott. Present. Paul. Present. Um, Charles, Charles sent me a note that he, his computer crashed, so he's restarting and he will be on in a few minutes. He just has a computer issue. So, um, when he, uh, um, gets on, I'm going to note that he is attending, um, just for the record. But we do have um, a quorum, Madam Chair. We do have a quorum. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the 1st item is a conditional use permit. Uh, permanent parcel number 025-023-071 and 026. Um, we tabled this matter. So before we hear it, um, I'll need a motion to remove this from the table. I move to remove it from the table, Downing. Second, Fluker. We have a motion and a second. Can I have the roll, Michael? Downing. Yes. Fluker. Yes. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Paul. Yes. And uh, I don't see Charles yet. Does anyone see him? Councilman's life. I just my my audio took a couple minutes to connect for some reason. So I not sure okay. what we're going on. <laughs> uh, we're just removing the first item from the table. Um, but we'll okay. note that you have arrived and you're here. Um, I think on this matter, we're going to hear from staff first, um, and then we'll hear from the applicant second. So I'm going to turn it over to the planning commission staff. Thank you. This is director Huang. Um, as many of you know, there's uh, been a long, a long timeline on this case. So we're eager to uh, provide due process for this particular hearing. Uh, we have Shannon Leonard from the zoning department who will provide, uh. The presentation and then, as noted, the applicants will will also respond. Go ahead, Shannon. Good morning, uh, Shannon Leonard, chief zoning planner for city planning commission. And so, um, just going to preface to say that we all have different stakes and uh, different roles in this matter. Um, us being here at city planning, uh, we're responsible for making sure that the applicants get due process. 
um, and that they go through the same process as every other applicant. Um, that is our role. Uh, so moving forward, I will give you the presentation and present all of the facts of this case, uh, and then we can go from there. So next slide, please. So this is the location of this uh, proposal. It is at the corner near West 159th and Lorraine in the Cam's Corners neighborhood. Uh, it is on a retail corridor that is has a pedestrian retail overlay with a underlying zoning of local retail. Uh, there are a few bars in the area. There's a uh, Jehovah Witness Church on the northmost side of the screen. Um, there is a takeout fish restaurant. There are a couple retail shops, some mixed use buildings. And then this particular property is against a multifamily residential district, which buffers a two family residential district with a single family and two family homes. Next slide, please. <laughs> and so the proposal here was Miss Prashana Brown. She has been an event stylist and an event planner for many, many uh, years. Uh, she decided she wanted to take her business to the next level. Um, she found this place on Craigslist. Uh, it seemed like a wonderful place. It had a garage for her to store all of her event uh, decorations. Uh, she normally travels around to different events, but she wanted to open her own space so she could start hosting her own events. Um, and she was uh, sent this. She found this location. It seemed like a great place. Um, and so she picked this neighborhood specifically because she serves a diverse uh, range of clientele. Uh, and so she wanted her clientele to feel safe. Uh, and so this was the location she chose. Um, the landlord presented this uh, space as a place for an event center um, and uh, that she couldn't use it for any other purpose uh, and that, that, that this space was ready for that. Um, so as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, those are all of her uh, decorations that she has been using uh, to decorate parties for many years. Um, so this isn't just some kind of flyby party center. Um, she really spent a lot of money and time in investing in this place. Next slide, please. Um, she came to this place. Uh, she thought it was great. She upgraded the flooring. Uh, she decorated, she put in her own decorations, thinking that she could go forward uh, with her business here. So she did sign a lease in May. She opened in June and she quickly found out uh, from neighbors and the surrounding community that that her business was not really welcomed in the neighborhood um, or that she could not operate her business there. So she received a violation notice uh, last fall uh, and then promptly put in an application to change the use. And this is not uncommon. Many of these PRO cases that come before you um, are applicants. They are not, they're the tenants, they're not the landlord. Uh, that come before you uh, not realizing they've already opened their business, unfortunately, and don't have the proper occupancy permits on file. Uh, moving forward, next slide, please. So not only does she find out that this business is not permitted in this, the underlying zoning, she's also in a pedestrian retail overlay district, which means she needs conditional uh, uses, excuse me, conditional uses from this uh, commission. The first conditional use she needs is a driveway across uh, the public sidewalk. That is because in our pedestrian retail overlay districts, these are historic shopping districts uh, where we're trying to preserve our storefronts. Uh, we are promoting walkability, uh, et cetera. And so the driveway over the public sidewalk, you must determine if the size, shape, and layout of the subject property does not permit placement of the parking or the driveway in a more suitable location or if it has been demonstrated by the applicant that the placement of the parking, loading, or driveway in allowed location would jeopardize the continued occupancy of the subject property. In this case, this property is a landlocked property, and so the only way to reach the rear parking lot would be that driveway uh, if we were to use that parking lot. Next slide, please. Uh, the second is this uh, section of the code that requires any type of social space, whether it's a meeting space for sip uh, wine, sip and paint or whether it's small events, gatherings, et cetera, it requires a assembly permit, an A3 permit from the Department of Building and Housing. A place of assembly and a pedestrian retail overlay is defined as an institutional use in our 343.23. Uh, so for this case, she needs a conditional use for the institutional use. Next slide, please. 
And so for that, you will have to, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. My phone keeps ringing. It never rings this much. I apologize. Uh, and so for the resident uh, institutional use, you have to determine if the subject building space was designed specifically for this type of use proposed, or if the denial of the application would result in long term vacancy, or if the proposed use is needed in the immediate area or suitable alternative locations are unavailable. And you really only have to determine if one or more of the following is the case. Next slide, please. And so I just want to bring to our attention because we're bringing all the facts to you so that you can make a good decision here is that we have recently had several of these event centers uh, in a pedestrian retail overlay district. And um, in the last two years, there have been six that have been approved by planning commission, as well as from the board of zoning appeals. And so I just want to run through these real quick in 2020 in February, we had 5900 Detroit Avenue. Uh, they wanted to establish the use as an event center with live entertainment. They needed the conditional use as well as six variances. They needed 72 parking spaces and they were adjacent to a two family zone. All of the conditions were granted as well as the variances and there's verbal agreements for parking on file. In May of 2020, we had a conditional use for 4,700 Lorraine. They also wanted to establish the use as an event center for parties, baby showers, bridal showers, workshops, fundraisers, et cetera. Uh, they needed the conditional use for the institutional use and they needed 58 parking spaces. They were granted the conditional uses. They had a written agreement for 52 spaces with the urban community school. They were only permitted 99 attendees and they needed to have everybody off site by 1130 PM. They were in a two family and a local retail zone. Uh, next was 15515 Waterloo. This was to establish the use as a for profit retail art gallery social space for events. This was also adjacent to a two family district. They needed a conditional use for an institutional use. They needed 51 parking spaces, zero parking spaces were provided. They were given all of their uh, variances as well as the conditional use. And then the last case uh, that is most like this one is also is 532 East 185th Street. They established the use as a home share event space with open market and live entertainment. Uh, they needed the conditional use for an institutional use. They needed the variances for the use. Uh, CPC actually in this case asked them to reduce their parking and their variances were granted. Next slide, please. So in addition to that, uh, it came to our realization about three days ago uh, about what the occupancy of this space would be. So when you're talking about specifically an assembly use permit, you're permitted 50, 15 square feet per person. This space has 1,306 uh, square feet of usable gross floor area. Technically, this space could hold 87 people. However, when you have 50, over 50 occupants, your doors must swing in the direction of egress. So in this case, this building, the signs, the doors pull out uh, and you have to push them in. And then exit signage is required and a second means of egress that uh, could uh, be accessed publicly. Um, and then if you have over 99 or 100 folks, you need to make sure that your space is sprinkled. And then specifically to an assembly permit, if you have one unisex toilet, you're unfortunately only allowed to have 15 occupants. And this only applies for a building permit for assembly permit. If this was a carry out restaurant or diner, that might, might not necessarily be the case. And so in this specific case, this unfortunately basically renders this type of social space pretty much um, very unprofitable um, and unlikely for her business to be successful strictly on these without making uh, building improvements and upgrades. Next slide, please. And so before I give my zoning recommendation, I would like to acknowledge some of the roadblocks that Ms. Brown has faced. First, being her landlord who rented her space that did not have the correct occupancy permits, nor legal building features that support this type of event center or assembly occupancy. The second roadblock is a difficult and sometimes non-transparent city process. The third roadblock being the community where she decided to open the business and proceeded to hinder her from operating by expressing their disdain for her or her type of business through verbal altercations with her and her patrons, as well as ensuring that she was unable to secure parking from a variety of neighboring businesses. And lastly, the fourth roadblock being that Ms. Brown has poured her life savings into attempting to take her business to the next level 
by investing in her own social space. And because of the lack of support and knowledge, she has had to put her business on hold and she has taken a very substantial financial and emotional hit to her business and her family. For these reasons, in conjunction with the precedent of previous cases and the knowledge that decisions made by you all have a direct effect on everyday citizens for better or for worse, I recommend that this commission allow Ms. Brown to receive her conditional uses for the use of this property for the zoning considerations that we have discussed. If you are unable to grant her these conditional uses for a driveway over a public sidewalk or the institutional use on the zoning considerations presented, I recommend and I hope that this commission, the council, the CDC, and our departments within City Hall make the verbal commitment today on record to work with Ms. Brown to help her get out of this three year lease, recoup some of her lost funds, and find a suitable location for her business so she may provide for herself and family immediately. Thank you. Um, all right, commission members, uh, before um, we discuss this, um, I'd like to ask that either the applicant or the owner or any other um, uh, individuals who'd like to speak uh, about the matter, if they're here, um, just raise your hand um, and we'll hear that first before we open it up. Okay. Madam Chair, um, we have uh, Dean Packus. Okay. Well, please just state your name and your relationship to the project before I speak. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Dan Packus. I am uh, I am the son of the owner of the building. My mother, who's eighty seven years old, you know, actually owns the building, but we work together as a family to. Uh, you know, make this work for her. Uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, we've, our families owned the property a good 30 years. Um, when we had purchased the building back then, the exact space that we're referencing was um, uh, actually a, a uh, recording studio and also a, like, concert hall. So uh, that's what we had inherited when we purchased the building. And, and since then, it's been various other um, things like uh, 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 a CPA firm and, and other things. So it's, it's, it's you know, obviously as businesses come and go that, you know, it's, it's morphed into different things. Uh, that particular space is a little bit difficult in, in renting because it's such a large square footage area. And, um, and you know obviously with us we are limited with our parking and that just came with the territory of buying that particular building um, we're, we're landlocked and as as mentioned um we don't have any other options to take over any other parking spaces to supplement what we've got um, there's nothing really available around us that we could uh, personally purchase or do or you know unless we buy something else and tear down a building and put in a parking lot which I don't think is an option for that area um, so you know we're trying to make do as we can um, as as you see you know we we we're always open to renting who we can um, you know with, within reason and with within legality and uh, we've never had any issues with other tenants before meaning uh a community against any other tenants before uh, our tenants we've had have, have been pretty good you know you get good and bad but for can is good and I, again i think she's got a brilliant business concept and I, I you know we want her to succeed and that's you know we wholeheartedly support her in whatever she does as we do with any of our tenants and we have a diversified list of tenants within that building uh a good representation of the city of cleveland and we just hope that uh, this um, continues. I don't have too much more than beyond that. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to speak? Go ahead. Um, my name is Prashana Brown. I'm actually the tenant 
at 15736 Lorraine. Um, I just kind of wanted to introduce myself and give you guys just a little bit of insight on my business, Least Weeks events um, that I put together in April 2017. Um, I started out decorating, so I have over four years of clientele and experience. Um, I jumped out on faith with this business because I knew that I could benefit um, and it would be good for my business. Of course, I ran into some issues. Sorry if I'm a little emotional because just the events of what's been going on, it's really been taking me through some things, you know, like even with the community being so hard on me um, with judging a book by its cover. Um, just with not welcoming me without reason, um, basically. So I started this, I started decorating four years ago. Um, I do a lot of diverse. I have actually covered maybe, I'll say, 15 events at another location that's an event space two blocks from me. So I'm used to this, you know, I know this area. I thought that it would be a good area with me considering this space because, um, just the the diversity of my clientele and the people that I would, would like to service, I thought that it was a good area. However, I was stopped due to unfortunate circumstances um, with the community being so mean to me, um, not giving me a chance, you know, city councilman, just nobody not really giving me a chance, considering just getting to know the business. Nobody tries to get to know the business. And then with the unfortunate circumstances of the building, um, of what's going on, it's just basically, it's just been taking me through some things. So I just hope today that we could come up with a good resolution to where I can succeed because I really feel like this space, um, I would actually, if, Things wouldn't happen how they happen um, during this time this year. The successful would be the business would be very successful in the area. I have actually had to give back and refund clients because I did book out on this space for this following year, but I had to reimburse people, and so I took a financially hurt on that. I have nothing um, to move forward with anything, so I just wanted to share that to you know for you guys to kind of like understand where I am with it. Um, it's just been really hard and kind of like, I feel a little un kind of unfair in some ways with the community wise, but it's just, it's just been really hard. You know, they just been making it really hard for me. And this was a good thing, you know, like this was a good thing for my business and it has just, took in a, a complete turn to where it's affecting me in negative ways. And so I just want to come up with the resolution today so that I can move forward and, you know, the business could succeed because it, it can and it will. So I just wanted to share that so you guys can, you know, kind of like understand just where I am with it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, oh, Joyce. Thank you. Um, I, uh, thank you all. I appreciate the comments. Um, as you can see, it's a very complicated case of many layers. Um, you know, there's a cycle of either, um, you know, information that was either not known or unclear and then actions taking on that information. Uh, and then perceptions or feelings or, or, you know, results that came from that. And it's sort of um, continued in the cycle where we're trying to make decisions based off of information that was unclear. So, for example, you know, I, I wonder if Ms. Brown had known that there was one bathroom and that limited the maximum occupancy to 15 people, uh, if, if that would have been... Um, something for consideration, um, given that the lease was for an event space. Um, and so that, that, you know, tells me that there are specific issues with city process um, that would not have been known until an official building inspection 
after the conditional use permit and after the variance. And so, uh, as, as Shannon shared, we found this out about three days ago. And so that is um, definitely information that is new for consideration for this use. Um, as, as there might be conflicting, uh, conflicting facts, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not conflicting facts, but with the lease being for an event space and for there only being one bathroom. Uh, I do believe that this uh, would provide economic hardship on Ms. Brown and has provided economic hardship on Ms. Brown. Um, so I stand by Shannon's uh, you know, recommendations based on what Ms. Brown intends for the space, which is small gatherings, as well as a community meeting space. So again, it's that the conditional use is provided and, and Ms. Brown is able to go forward with, uh, you know, other improvements or that if uh, the body decides not that we would commit, including myself uh, at the city to assisting her to find a new space. Um, thank you. I'm going to open up to the commission for questions. I have one technical question and I'm not sure if this goes to you, Joyce, or you, Ms. Brown, or the owner, but um, if I heard the whole presentation correctly, is one of the issues that um, Ms. Brown was not properly informed by the owner of the requirements uh, of the space and also the improvements that would be required are actually the responsibility of the owner, not her, and she was not aware of them. And they are, I guess you're saying, extremely expensive in order to be compliant. Is that correct? Uh, both information from, this, from the whole city process around use permit, as well as uh, interaction between landlord and tenant on, on who is doing what and what is necessary. Okay. Shannon, Shannon, did you want to chime in on that too? Yeah. So uh, for this specific case, the 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 lease was signed. The under the lease, it states that this can only be a party event center. Um, I don't know. If, I I presume at this point that the landlord um, maybe was not aware that in for an event space you need to have two bathrooms. Um, you need to have your doors going the correct direction, and you need exit signage. Um, and so to be able to use this space from a building and housing perspective with a building permit, once we get past the zoning, uh, and to use this space for the, to be a successful business, she would need an additional bathroom and her doors to be fixed um, and exit signage to be placed on there. And so that can be cost prohibitive um, if the landlord or the applicant for the applicant specifically, it's definitely cost prohibitive. Um, and so that's really a building and housing and civil matter before you today is simply zoning uh, conditional use issues. Um, obviously, this is complicated completely all around. So. Okay, commission members, I'm going to ask for uh, any questions or comments. I'm happy to jump in, Lillian, um, since this is obviously something that's uh, been on, on, on my radar for a while. And, and just to kind of start with those, those larger issues, um, uh, just kind of in no particular order, um, I, I do feel really uh, bad for Ms. Brown. I, I think that, you know, she's gotten into this, this lease situation, um, and I don't think it's uh, reasonable or that we expect every small business owner to have a hyper awareness of every minute uh, city regulation, even as we work to make our processes um, more predictable and more efficient. Um, just bluntly, I, I have less sympathy for the property owner. Um, a couple weeks before this lease was inked, uh, the development corporation actually met with the property owner, said, as you're looking to run out space, make sure you call us and we can help you do zoning analysis or determine what permits there are. Um, so the, 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 the idea that one, the idea that the property owner, uh, you know, had was coming into this completely green, I, I guess I, I just don't believe, but also, um, you know, I do think it is the obligation of property owners uh, around our city to uh, be doing their due diligence and that there are rules and regulations and, and we can't just 
um, allow you know ignorance of the law is no excuse and, and i think that that's a situation here and now what we have is a a tenant who is under a lease that uh mandates a use that you know, uh, she can't currently operate um as uh, to to, to miss leonard's point about uh, city assistance i know my office uh west park cams and uh the department of economic development have already been you know in communication with miss brown asking her uh you know uh what her requirements are for the space so that we can uh you know assist with site searches both you know within this specific neighborhood as well as you know other areas nearby um to just to get a sense of what's available and and, and what works with the um with the proposed business use and and, and i i commit to that moving forward you know i've, I've also um you know, spoken with some contacts at, at legal aid, um, you know, should Ms. Brown uh, need to uh, consult with someone about the validity of the lease. Um, you know, and, and just about, about, you know, as the local councilman, the uh, outreach that I've gotten uh, about the use and, and the, the, um, the uh, opposition to the use has been primarily about uh, parking and uh, events ending later in the evening. And I think so when you have an assembly use, unlike a small business where there's gonna be a turnover of parking and people coming and going, an assembly use is obviously gonna assemble people all at one point and then people are going to uh, kind of leave within a short period of time. So it's, it's, it's more about traffic and noise in that extent. And it's almost arguably an unavoidable uh, after effect of, of just this type of use. Uh, whatever it is, and, and also a discomfort with knowing that, you know, not necessarily in this process, but the boarding, board of zoning appeals process, if the variance is granted, that variance follows the property and, and you know, should uh, this, if, if, if this operator were to vacate the space and a new one were to come in, uh, that there, there would not be a vetting and an assurance that that future uh, operator would be a, a good player. And then just with the parking, there are uh, four moderately sized apartment buildings right around the corner that rely on the street parking. So, and they don't have dedicated lots for or on spots for each apartment. So uh, there is already a, a demand for on street parking immediately in the area. Um, and then just uh, Madam Chair, just narrowing it down to what's specifically before us today. I'll say, and, and uh, to uh, Director Wong, I think that this is something we need to look at. The, the requirement for the driveway over a sidewalk I'll, I'll say is a sort of a, a, a silly requirement, it's, especially if it's an existing condition. I understand the intent for new construction, but um, I, I, I think that it would be valuable time for us to kind of tighten up that language and, and not be wasting uh, this commission's time with existing conditions. But as, as for the assembly permit, uh, you know, that's the sticking point. Uh, as, as it was noted, uh, the space is uh, in a local retail district, you know, local retail is intended to serve the immediate area. Uh, there's not sufficient parking, no ability to get a, a parking agreement within the immediate area for off street parking. Um, you know, the, the, the space requires uh, retrofitting uh, and, and then just, I don't believe the owner has uh, sufficiently demonstrated a, a, a long term burden uh if, if this were not an event space the, the well, although the space was vacant for some time uh the, the moment it became advertised it was uh uh easily rented quickly so i i think that um for those reasons um my position is is to uh deny these two conditions and and to continue to work with miss brown to help her find uh, a, a suitable location Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We do have Mr. Packus with his hands raised again, and we have Ms. Brown with her hand raised again. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, well, let's go to Ms. Brown first. Um, I just wanted to touch bases on some of the things that Mr. Slife has said, um, just to cover because I think that they're important um, regarding them reaching out to me, trying to help find a space, um, I have only, it has only been brought to my attention two days ago. So I think that that is kind of time sensitive considering that we have been going along with this for five months and I have honestly been trying to get in touch with Mr. Slight um, to talk to him personally 
for at least about four months and I have had no contact with him only with Ben Campbell, um, who is someone over in neighborhood development who has tried to help me, but he had to stand back um, when Mr. Slife couldn't, um, couldn't support the business. Also with regard in the parking, um, I think that that matters. Mr. Slife and maybe other businesses has made it hard for me to obtain a parking agreement because they have got together on several occasions to make it hard to get everybody on a bandwagon for unforeseen reasons, unfair reasons. I'm not sure what it is um, because I have asked to be a part of community meetings before back in June and July prior to meeting Ben Campbell so that I can introduce myself to the community. Um, so I just thought that that was kind of important to state that considering what Mr. Seif was saying about the agreement because I have re reached out to several businesses over there in regarding the parking and talking to a couple of the businesses and business owners, it has been brought to my attention that everyone has been brought to, came together to be on the same team, no matter you know how they felt about it, because like I said, Seven Seas did had a verbal agreement with me that I would be able to use his parking. Um, he stated that I could, he could do it verbally. Um, but then after the parking issue came up and I started reaching out to several businesses and I was just getting um, uncomfortable energy from them, unwelcoming energy from the businesses and I wasn't understanding why, um, he had to pull that back and I just didn't get it. So I just wanted to touch bases on that because I thought that that was important. Important for me considering that two days of ago was the first of my acknowledgement that someone would try to help me find somewhere. Um, and this has been dragging on for at least four to five months. And I think that probably could have helped some of my struggle and pain that I have been going through. Um, and also with the parking, it has been very unfair because um, I, this is a community. They've been there longer than me. So they have built relationships with each other that, you know, I'm new there. Those businesses been standing there for five to ten years plus um if i do my research on them um but that has even been become hard and unfair to get in a parking permit like i had people agree to it and then when i talked to them a week later their mind changed out of the blue and i just wasn't understanding why so i did want to you know say something about that and then also mention i have three bars within um I'll say maybe 500 feet from me. So when they say about the timing and everything, I close at 11 p.m. All, all the time, even from since opening day. So I don't see how that interferes with a bar that closes at 2.30 a.m. That's just to touch bases on, you know, like the community and just what I'm getting, you know, and the backlash and everything, you know, like how it's coming to me, like as the tenant. So I just, just did want to share that information because I feel that it is important considering that, you know, it may with you guys' decision. Okay. And, and, and Madam Chair, if I could just respond to that, there has been some, some new emails uh, within the past few days uh, re-engaging on this, uh, but Ms. Brown will recall that I spoke with her on the phone in December uh, uh, detailing all of this and, and just uh, explaining some of the obstacles uh, in, including the, the building code issues potentially. Uh, so, so any characterization that I haven't been engaged, I, I think is incorrect. Um, I also uh, don't uh, think it's uh, appropriate to suggest that I've been moving the needle on local businesses. I've actually spoken with uh, a number of the businesses, you know, uh, after all of this came to light, uh, some uh, were in opposition, some were actually supportive. Um, but but the, the fact of the matter is that because of those bars and because of existing parking agreements that they have with other area businesses, businesses are unable to have a signed legally binding agreement guaranteeing off street parking because those spots have already been committed elsewhere. Um, so that's that's I just want to offer that clarification. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, to the building owner and then we're going to go ahead and. Um, uh, have commission members uh, speak. 
Yeah, the only thing I wanted to mention is, uh, I know Shannon had mentioned it within the, her presentation that uh, within the lease, it says it could only be an event space. And the, the only reason why we put that within our leases is so we don't get a, in a situation where somebody says it's going to be this type of business and then all of a sudden it becomes a different kind of business. <clears throat> so we try and put specifically what the business is so we aren't surprised as a property owner and handcuffed that they say they're going to be one type of business and then when they open up it's a different kind of business so it's not that you know however you want to sort of characterize how the uh it could only be this type of thing we we've, we've always been flexible but we want to be cautious that if somebody commits that they're going to be doing this that's that's what they're going to do and we're not going to be surprised down the road that it's going to be something else after they already signed the, the lease so that's that's why we put the type of business within the, the lease itself. Um, um, question to you, did did you know, are you aware that this was not in compliance and that you had obligations um, to meet for this tenant? I, we were not aware of, of what needed to be done because again, in the past, there were, you know, mass gathering type of business within the, the exact same location and, you know, why it was allowed back then and then all of a sudden it changed and we we're unaware that uh, things needed to be altered no we were not aware of that um we just and even though that they were previous uses that had changed multiple times um or that the assembly use would require bathrooms and other things that 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 by code you need for assembly well, in, in the sense, though, her her assembly is very small, and that I think I forwarded a copy of a lease that Prikana uses, uh, Roshana uses that that you know she only limits even within the lease a certain number of people within the space. So, and and she only has you know uh, seating and accommodations for you know under fifty for that space. So, whether you know, I, I know the code. The, that uh, Shannon had presented that it needs to be more than that because it's, uh, I can't remember what it was, more than 15 people for event space, but it's different for retail space. It's a different code. You know, the, that that nuance we were unaware of because it, it's never been an issue with all our other retail spaces within the same building. So. Um, but you acknowledge that the lease is not in compliance. Uh, well, I, I would like to know what part of it is not in compliance. The number of bathrooms, the use, the parking. Ms. Leonard was made issues. aware of the parking that we only can provide and whether that goes beyond that, um, that I don't know. Okay. I can um, only I can right. control that what we have. We have what right. spaces are within our own property. Right. But I'm I'm. I'm acknowledging that that what was agreed on was not possible. I mean, she she did tour the space, and you know we expressed our concerns on parking, but you know there is adequate street parking for that area. So you know whether you're saying that well that street parking is taken up for the residences and it can't be used for businesses that uh, you know I, I didn't know that residences can you know, reserve street parking, so. Um, no, I, I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, that, that this use was not, uh, was not permitted without variance. So I'll stop this and uh, open it up to commission members for a motion or a, any conversation. We'll close the public. I'd like to make a motion that um, the conditional use permit be granted with the conditions as stated in the presentation. I'm going to second. This is Paul. We have a motion and a discussion. Um, any further um, further um, discussion? Madam Chair, I must abstain. This is August. OK, we have an abstention. Um, I will say that the, um, that this, 
that granting this um, does require significant improvements to the property um, and a kind of undue burden. And I want to to acknowledge that they are for the the owner, not for the lessee. Um, to meet these requirements, because there are significant requirements, even if we grant this, that I believe cannot be met, which are the parking requirements and the changes to the physical structure to meet the use requirements. So, even by passing this, um, though the burden of those fall to the property owner to meet for this lessee to be in compliance. They are not to the lessee to meet those requirements. So with that, if there's no further discussion, um, if we can have uh, the role. Yes. Curry. Yes. Cray Scott. Yes. All. Yes. Slide. Oh. Have an abstention from August, and uh, motion carries. Um, and um, I think that uh, um, if the staff can keep us updated on how this proceeds, that would be be good. And um, and thank you all. And 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 Miss Miss Curry, I I just want to state. Um, Thank, thank you to the commission members for uh, you know rendering a decision. Um, I think a point of frustration from the community has been uh, a misrepresentation at, at official meetings versus what's experienced as it relates to hours, as it relates to parking, as it relates to uh, the sale of liquor. And um, I, I think that was evidenced by by Miss Brown characterizing that the, the me and the development corporation have not been attempting to be helpful and and I just want to just state that because I I, I, I don't I don't appreciate the insinuation of, of how I've been engaged in this process thank you okay thank you um let's go on to the the next matter it's a design review case um and I'm gonna need to swear in the applicants if they are here is Kurt here or anyone else to speak to this matter Kurt is here okay Anybody else? Um, do you swear to just you? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I understand that uh, this is coming back, um, and we've heard this, and it's because of a little bit of a shift in terms of the siting. I'm going to ask that you really focus on what has changed since we gave final design approval, um, and we don't need to see the entire presentation. Just what is that? What is what has changed? Um, let me. Madam Chair, okay. is it possible for the staff, uh, Kim Scott, to just to provide a, additional reasoning for that would be great. why it's appearing again? Yes. I, I can help cover this section. Kim, are you there? No, this is Kim and I'm here and I apologize. I'm driving to court. So um, this came back because the placement of the building needed to be shifted to the south by 15 feet. Um, as you all know, when you uh, provide final approval, you're providing the approval for the, the placement, the massing and the complete final design and all of that, nothing, none of, none of the massing and the design has changed with the, with the uh, project. It's only the placement. And I will um, ask Mr. Updegraff to explain the reason that the, the, uh, the details for why the building had to be shifted back 15 feet. Is this related to utilities? And if you want to give a brief description, Kurt, that would be great, but make sure that it's brief. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I can't, uh, I can't share my, the, the, uh, the, the site plan. So I, you, I guess you'll have to, uh, yeah, if we can. Try to find the uh, site plan. 
on the presentation. Basically, that's good. Basically, um, uh, Fulton is a street that runs east and west between East 75th, which is the uh, uh, up and down street on the left, and East 79th on the right. That's to be vacated by the city as part of this project that runs right through the proposed building. Uh, we discovered that within Holton is a 12 inch intermediate pressure gas line, which needs to be rerouted. It can't simply be abandoned. Um, so it'll be rerouted to the north, just south of Opportunity Corridor. Uh, it's about an eight month process. We've been working with the gas company to build our building over the existing gas line while they're relocating it to the north. Um, uh, but to do that, we have to shift where our footers are. They happen to line up right on top of the gas line. So we have shoved it to the south towards the bottom of the page, which uh, increases the setback from opportunity quarter by 15 feet. Right now it's about 56 feet as originally approved. So it will be about 71 feet uh, after the shift. Uh, in either case, uh, it, it was always more than the setback required by code. So we're, uh, there, there were no variances or anything like that. So it's uh, it's just adding more lawn between the building and opportunity corridor. And we are you. It says in the notes that you'll come back with a revised landscaping plan, uh, especially for that um, setback in terms of what you'll be doing. Will you come back to staff with that? Um, that was a question. I was hoping that we could, in fact, come back to staff and have them approve it. Yeah. As opposed to going through two yeah. more meetings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. I, I will tell you that I we did have a a drawing done. Um, for uh, you know, with the with the landscaping, it's really not changing much. Uh, through the course of this process, there's existing, uh, CEI poles running. The east and west parallel to opportunity quarter on the north of our site. CEI has told us they want a 50 foot easement there. So it's really not leaving much space between the edge of the easement and the face of the building to add landscaping. We ended up shifting a little bit of it a little further north to get it closer to opportunity quarter, but it's really not going to show much of a change to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, commission members. Madam Chair, we do have Mr. Wong with, with their hand raised. Okay. I just wanted to provide additional comment. Uh, we are supportive of the change, primarily because of utilities uh, being an issue. We primarily wanted this to come before the commission uh, for the record, because this is a new form based code pilot zone. And so we just wanted to note that we did not want to set precedent by having additional setbacks. Um, but for this case, because of utilities, that, that we, we are supportive of this. Thank you. I move approval, Downing. I we have second. a motion. McCray Scott. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further comment? Um, I would ask commission members if you might uh, make the note to the motion that this applicant can come back to staff with the landscaping plan and and I would argue that maybe you should add additional landscaping, but you do not have to come back to the commission. Is that okay with um, the um, commission members? Yes, I will add that to my motion, Madam Chair. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, any further comment? Um, I'm gonna call the roll. Downing. Yes. Blucher. Abstain. Curry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. Paul. Yes. Slight. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. So this does not need to come back. Um, you can come back to staff with the landscaping details. Um, the next Thank item you. is you're welcome. Thank you. Is East 2022-001. Um, this is a pro promos proposed demolition of a two-story structure at 10810 Oak. Colonel Court and uh, Latoya Alamine, can I swear you in? Uh, actually, this is Daryl Curtis. I'm representative of the owner. Uh, Lightning Demolition is our uh, demolition contractor. Um, so I'm going to okay. be presenting for this. 
Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? I do. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so, yeah, the, this and the next one, they're just houses that are in disrepair in the new economy neighborhood, um, just east of the opportunity corridor, and uh, we're just seeking final approval to demolish them. I move approval, Downing. Second, Fluker. A motion and a second can call the roll. Yes. Fluker. Murray. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Paul. Yes. Life. Yes. Um, I think we have to do these separately because there were two, correct? There are two. Uh, is that correct? There are two. So the second one is 107-07 Arthur yeah. Avenue. Um, so I'll need a motion separately for the second one, which is on the screen. I move approval. Downing. Second, Fluker. We have a motion and a second. Can we call the roll? Downing. Yes. Fluker. Yes. Curry. Yes. Trey Scott. Yes. Paul. Yes. Life. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, the next item is the far west design review, Lake Avenue apartments and townhomes. This is 2022-005 at 8400 Lake Avenue. Uh, Brandon's here from Geist. Is there anyone else that's presenting? I'm Brad Nelson. I'm Brad Nelson. I'm with the development team. I'm just going to say hi and um, introduce okay. ourselves. Um, I'll just swear you both in in case you get any questions. Um, do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? I do. Okay. I do. All right. This is actually for final approval. Conceptual. Or sorry, conceptual approval. We'll take it though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, maybe we'll see. <laughs> no, we don't have enough information. But... All right. <laughs> Adam Chair, we we do have Adam Davenport and. Ms. McCray Scott also with their hands raised. I'm not sure if they just wanted to be sworn okay. or I'm not sure. Okay. And I don't know if staff wants to go first. You know, we'll maybe see the presentation and then we'll hear from the staff too as well. That was a mistake. No, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Take it away. And then I'm sorry, Lillian, Thank I you. I think uh, our, our partners, Kim Kinez, are on as well and Six Mo, Patrick Thornton. Um, they should probably get sworn in as well. I apologize. Okay. Um, if they're also speaking, um, do you all swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, take it away, and I assume then we'll hear from staff after the presentation. Just, just want to introduce myself. My name is Brad Nelson. I'm with Property Advisors Group, um, which is largely a, a family company. Um, and we are working with Kinez and Sixmo, as well as uh, Geis on this project. We're really excited about it. One of the things that guys excited um, was the um, form based zoning that's proposed for the site. Um, hopefully, um, you know, love to see that pass, obviously, but we are going to, we're attempting to design the project um, to meet with, uh, uh, to meet the requirements of the form based zoning, um, should that get passed. Um, so that's how we've designed this. Um, had a great, relationship working with the Northwest Neighborhoods Community Development Corporation so far. Um, had a very positive feedback from the neighborhood. Um, and we received, I believe, our conceptual approval from the West Far West Design Review Board. So uh, really happy with the progress so far. So we appreciate you guys taking the time. I'll let Brandon go from here. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, and I'll try to be brief through the process. And it's the first time you guys have seen it, but it is our intention to come back. For conceptual schematic and final. So, um, the idea here is to focus on site orientation, massing, and, and, and the overall development uh, at this point, uh, and we'll have further detail. So, uh, the site is a, a unique site. It's a um, relatively open site. There's two small warehouse structures hidden behind the um, uh, existing uh, foliage uh, on the site. Um, there's obviously been a significant amount of investment to Lake Avenue uh, with the bike path uh, and, and bike lane uh, and street improvements. 
Um, so here's just some views to the site uh, from various various angles in, in the air. If you want to go to the next slide. Here's some street context uh, to the area. It's a unique site because it's deep and most of the building will not be fronting Lake Avenue. Um, there'll be uh, townhouses on the uh, more residential scale of Lake Avenue with the apartment building in the rear of the site. Um, so we do have, uh, we call it the Baker extension, which is really a private access drive between the low chemical building, uh, which you see in the bottom two right pictures, um, which will, uh, will be treated like a, a street. Um, next slide. Um, as mentioned, uh, this project is being designed to uh, conform with the new form based zoning, uh, even though we understand that it's not formally approved yet. Uh, it's our hope and intention that it will be done uh, before. Uh, the project gets submitted. Uh, if it's not, we will pursue uh, zoning variances to conform with the new form-based uh, zone coding uh, as we go through the process and, 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 and through that aspect. That new proposed zoning, it is a split zone, um, and basically the townhouse development is on a three-story um, uh, parcel, and the uh, rear of the site in the purple uh, is a seven-story uh, mixed-use uh, parcel. Next slide. Just some overall site inspiration context to the project. Uh, we have a large uh, green space that will be open to the public in the center courtyard um, of the seven story structure of the apartment building. Um, just some ideas and thought process. We have a 10 foot wide uh, bike and walking path that we're hoping is a spawn to be a catalyst um, for future connections to get to Edgewater Park and uh, to the bike pass. It was part of the master plan in the, uh, for the area. Uh, and so we wanted to respect that and incorporate that into the project. Additionally, creating a, a mature foliage and mature green space uh, and, and unique experience within uh, that area along the seven story buildings. That would include bocce courts, uh, some community gardens, uh, dog park, um, probably some fire pits and seating areas, uh, and then creating kind of a really unique walking bike path around the perimeter of the site on the westerly side with some in ground lighting. Uh, to create kind of an ambient glow uh, and, and encouraging, you know, a safe, a safe manner. Uh, next slide. So here's the overall uh, site plan uh, and orientation. As we mentioned, there's 13 uh, 20 by 40 townhomes on the front of the site along Lake Avenue and the C-shaped uh, apartment building uh, oriented with views to the city skyline and lake um, with that central courtyard that has a, again, it's an open public courtyard. It's intended to be a community benefit uh, and, and additional green space for the community, along with kind of a, park, a pocket entry park. The designs of that were, were obviously here, just the conceptual states of just placemakers here. Um, we'll, we'll start refining and uh, working through community feedback uh, to what uh, program needs to be included within, and then also um, uh, the, the true design of that. Um, overall, the building's a seven story structure, two stories of park and podium, five stories of, of uh, wood construction apartments, 107 units. Uh, we have 170 parking spaces, so a one-to-one -one ratio for the apartment building and two car garages for all of the townhomes uh, for parking compliance. There'll be 11 parking spaces that are uh, unsecure at the basically adjacent to the courtyards in a courtyard. Um, they will be accessed off of that private drive um, to utilize that space. Next slide. This is just a uh, footprint and uh, floor plans for the townhouses themselves, a 20 by 40 module, um, three stories with a penthouse for roof deck access off of those. Next slide. Here's a inspiration exterior board of the materiality of the project. Uh, the intention for the building is to have a modern industrial feel um, and, and fit into the context because there's a, a lot of adjacent industrial buildings that have uh, um, a pretty significant impact uh, adjacent but then create a kind of a modern flair with it, utilizing divided light windows, uh, a brick that has a, a heavy varnish and, and kind of wear to it. So again, making sure that it looks uh, like it's been there for a while, not a stark new building. And then the bottom right, you can kind of see some of the ideas on the garage screening of the two stories of garages. I should mention, we did look at this project as doing a one story podium, elevating that roof deck uh, patio to the second floor uh, for the amenity space. We just felt it was better to be connected to the ground, open to the public, and not creating kind of, I'll say, a, a full site build out uh, uh, parking deck, you know, concrete structure uh, that 
couldn't utilize some of the, the greenery and, and, and spatial conditions. We felt even though it was a more expensive option, it was the right option for this project and also gave us a little bit more height for better views on the upper floors. Uh, so it was worth the investment. Next slide. Here's an exterior uh, inspiration board for the for the townhouses. Again, uh, we'll be back with the actual designs of all the exteriors of the buildings um, and uh, uh, with more detail. Next slide. Here's a conceptual massing. Again, just to give you a sense of scale uh, area of, of buildings in, in the area. And, you know, the rear of Baker uh, and the site has a considerable amount of industrial uh, projects, even though there's a lot of single family homes along Lake Avenue. Uh, but to give you kind of a sense of scale of, of the architecture or the, the massing, again, meant to be a white box right now um, because we're, we're really focusing on the site orientation and, and, and program. Next slide. Here's a view looking to the west, again, of the building and scale, the seven story uh, apartment building in the rear uh, with three story townhouses in the front. Next slide. And then here's a street view looking at that kind of pocket park entrance that will create kind of a nice uh, focal entry to that walking path and element as you you know walk around the building. And I think we have one more slide that we just wanted to show. Here's some of the style of architecture that we're planning for as we continue to progress and refine the design. Um, you can see that the uh, the parking garage screening um, elements is going to be mixed mesh and decorative fins uh, to kind of leave an open air garage, but continue the architectural style and flavor. Um, the idea here again is an industrial building with a uh, uh, looking building uh, in a modern take with a segmented panel that has some ribbing at various widths. Um, that is kind of the modern condition of the industrial brick. Uh, so obviously uh, very early on in the stages of the conceptual aspects. Um, I should note just for the commission and maybe Adam will get into the details, but we did have five conditions with this project that were very well received from the neighborhood and then also a design review. Um, we feel that we can accommodate as we continue to refine all those elements pretty well and they've already started thinking about some of those comments and suggestions. Um, and a lot of the emphasis was just ensuring that we uh, have an appropriate amount of foliage. We're taking away a fair amount of larger trees in this area and uh, we strongly agree and understand that that's something that we need to design within the project as we also want it to be a beautification of the site and an attribute. Um, to these buildings and neighborhoods. Uh, okay. Commission members, any comment? Sorry. Madam Chair, could we go back to the site plan? Is that what you needed, August? Yeah, it's kind of small, but I I, I could blow it up. Hold on, hold on a second. My question, my question: Where the townhouses occur? Do do you are are, are you guys going to be a little more um, sensitive to how that auto court is treated, so it's not just concrete and your, yes. your traditional go to. And and Sorry one of the being sarcastic. <laughs> no, and and and. and uh, I don't want to steal Adam's uh, discussion points here from all the, the, na the neighbors and then also design review. There was some really good suggestions about trying to see if we can angle the townhomes. Um, you know, the idea was to match the angle of Lake Avenue, but that's not unable to be done without reducing a significant amount of pads for the townhomes. But we can skew that a little bit to create an opening and allow a view corridor to the main entry to the apartment building. Um, and in doing such as well, we're going to kind of choke down that court right now. It's a pretty wide width. It's at 28 feet between the townhomes and it could easily be 20 foot. So again, allowing more buffer on the perimeter of the left uh, of, the, of the townhouses to the west um, to allow for a nicer entry. And another thing, I understand efficiency with townhouses with, I, I'm an advocate of having some sort of back door off that court. And I, I believe Madam Chair has expressed that concern previously i i just think it creates a better environment for the people who live there in my opinion so you're not having to open your garage door to go out and just see what the heck's going on in the, in the world just a thought mission members any other 
comments or questions? Hey, um, move. Go ahead, Diane. I'm sorry. I move approval. Uh, Madam Downing. We still haven't we still haven't heard from Mr. Davenport. Okay, well, uh, how about this? Um, since there is a motion, I'm going to ask for a second. We have still, we can hear from the staff and then also make any comments or changes. Um, so, I second. so we have a motion and then a second. So, Adam, if you want to go ahead and then we'll take any other discussion. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, nothing particularly to add towards the design. I think that the concept is was well received by the committee. Um, the development of this, the central green space and more of a, a main entry point because the main building is set back from Lake is important to the committee. Uh, but overall, we're excited that this is kind of the first major project that's coming through the form based code pilot area for Detroit Shoreway. Um, and excited about continuing some themes um, from those those studies and uh, and the pilot about uh, especially about the um, the bike path kind of surrounding the site. That's something that the if you're familiar with the Edison development that also takes place there. Uh, but planning kind of for the future of this northern kind of triangle uh, Lake Avenue area around the the waterfront and the railroad right here uh, we think is important for for future developments of the, the low low chemical and kind of Alcon site as well. Thank you. And we have Director Wong with. Thank you. Um, is, I would like to also share that the Northwest Neighborhood CDC submitted a letter reporting out on community engagement. So there have been two community engagement meetings where uh, citizens were broadly supportive, including one that had 48 people. And there were a few themes that were shared um, that they would like to desire in the next iteration of uh, schematic design um, or uh, even in sort of the conceptual development. Um, so there, uh, if, if I may, I can share those briefly. So there was a strong desire for a tree canopy replacement strategy because uh, this development site contains one of the highest concentrations of existing canopy cover in that census block. Um, uh, there is a desire for more dynamic green space, particularly the pocket park proposed for the Lake Avenue facing side of the project. There were concerns regarding pressures on on street parking. And then there's a desire for an affordability component, which uh, may not necessarily be under the purview of this particular body, but uh, was a part of the letter. Uh, residents expressed general support for the massing configuration, as well as the proposed walking and bike trail on the western border of the development site. I think we can. Incorporate those into the motion. If that makes sense, um, yes, so yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Madam okay. Chair. And, uh, De Denise, are you okay with that as well? Yes, yes. Okay. So we have a motion and a 2nd to approve conceptually with the design review comments um, for consideration. As the projects developed, um, are there any other comments or questions? Um, okay, so call the roll. Downing. Yes. Luther. Yes. Three. Yes. Trey Scott. Yes. All. Yes. Five. A motion carries. Um, the next item. Thank you all. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Um, Thank you very back. much. Bye bye. Um, this is a far west design review, Old Tony's renovation and partial demolition, uh, 1729 or 17209 Lorraine Avenue. Uh, is Lisa here to speak to this matter? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? I do. Um, okay, um, and this uh, demolition. Um, please go ahead. All right, so we uh, have owned the building, the old Tony's building for approximately 25 years. Um, that was my very first construction project when I started with the company all those years ago. So it is definitely near and dear to my heart. Um, 
and, and we only want the best for the building. So we're facing two problems there. We've got, uh, we feel the big problem, obviously everyone says that there's no parking. Um, we do have parking. A majority of the parking to the building is actually ours. Uh, we sit on the corner and the public house sits next to us. Over the years, we've purchased buildings, we've torn down buildings um, in order to get more parking. There's approximately 41 spots in the lot, um, approximate, uh, approximately 11 of them belonging to public house and about 30 belonging to our building. Um, we do have an easement for public house to use our drives in and off of Rocky River Drive and Lorraine Avenue. Um, so what we're proposing in downsizing the footprint of the current building is our other problem. We feel that the, the building is too large. We get a tenant in there. They last for three to five years and then they end up going out of business. Um, we've talked about this, you know, for years, we feel that, you know, the business is all gung ho. They go into the building. They're excited about it, and then within a year or two, they just, the, the owners kind of step back, they let their managers take over, and the businesses are just not succeeding. So we feel if we downsize um, the building itself, there is uh, the old part of the house that sits in the front, which is the Oswald Cam's old building, the original building. Um, we're thinking back in about the 1950s, there was an addition that was put on the back of the building. Um, and then about 15 years ago, one of our tenants put on the tiki bar that is all the way at the back of the building for an outside patio. So if we, we feel by taking off the outside patio and taking off the back part of the building, which is not original to the old house, um, we would, you know, add a few, we would add approximately nine parking spots, which parking is an issue, and then it would downsize the um, footprint of the building in hopefully bringing in a prospective tenant that feels that it would be more manageable for them. Um, the, the second floor, there, there is a, a space on the second floor that, that has never really been utilized because we feel like the first floor is just too large. Um, so, so, yes, so that is, um, that is our plan. I don't know if you want to go through the slides. We can show, you know, the pers the demolition floor plan of what's coming off. Then we've got the proposed floor plan. You can look from there uh, on this view here, the proposed site plan. It shows the new um, patio that we would want to put in. Um, everybody is in need and wanting patios. So we feel if we put a patio on that's more proportioned to the building itself um, would be a great addition. And then obviously the, uh, the approximate nine spots that we gain and then we put in um, you know, the new landscaping and everything for that area. We did receive on Wednesday, we did receive the conceptual approval um, from the Far West Design Committee with a few conditions, but they were really conditions that would be once we have the architectural drawings. We have not gone into architectural drawings at this point, other than what you see, because we're just, you know, we're wanting to get the conceptual approval before we move that forward. Madam Chair, I or to the staff, are is this for the demolition or is it for the approval of the concept plan as, as well? Or Madam Chair, if I may step in, uh, Commissioner Fluker, what I've done is I've combined the two uh, for design review into one agenda item for planning commission so that you can just do one motion for both unless you feel you need to split them apart because it's just for conceptual approval. Well, well given, given that context, then I, I would to approve uh, the, the applicant's request as, as outlined. Madam Chair, we do have Mr. Davenport too. You're muted. Lillian, you're muted. 
apologize. Um, before we just make a motion, I just I did want to state that the councilman who I think had to leave um, stated that he he also he was okay actually if this was final approval with the the landscaping and the plans coming back, but that the demolition would be final. So I just wanted to raise that, um, uh, but the details could come back and. I think he was even okay if they came back to staff and to local, but um, I just wanted to, in, to throw that in there. We can do whatever we we want, but um, but he was really supportive of this. So before I amend my motion, that maybe we hear from Mr. Davenport. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was going to be my one clarification. Actually, everybody on the committee was very supportive of the demolition. So if that is. Um, you know, a, a choice by the applicant, or they they want to start with that work. Um, the local committee was fine with that, uh, and then they can come back for final approval for the the specifics on the the building materials, uh, elevations, and landscape plan. Thank you. Okay, I um I then therefore amend my motion to include um, that the applicant come back. For final approval for um, exterior improvements considered. Okay, so we have a motion for the final approval of the demolition, um, and um, and that the uh, and can I clarify, August? Are you okay if it comes back to local and staff, or do you want it to come back yeah. here for the? I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, it, with with the caveat that they come back before staff and or local, and not back to the planning commission. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'll agree to that as a second. Okay, motion and a second. Any other discussion before we call the roll? All right, Michael, go ahead. Downing. Yes. Luker. Yes. Hurry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Paul. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's a great project. Um, so you could corridor design review 2021-033 Cleveland Midtown Delta Hotel renovation. This is seeking final approval 3614 Euclid Avenue. Uh, and uh, is Chris and Christine and Bill here, all three, or anyone who's going to speak? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? Yes, this yes. is Christine yes. Raymond, I do. Okay. Um, all right, so I think uh, we'll hear from the applicants and then we'll hear from the staff for any recommendations and then discussion. So um, take it away. Right. So this is Christine Raymond from Casmar Architects. I'm, I was asked to make a brief presentation for this project, so we will do that. Good morning. Thank you everyone for your time. Um, this is the existing University Hotel and Suites that is on the south side of Euclid near East 36th Street. It is going to be primarily an interior renovation project, um, completely renovated on the interior with some improvements to the exterior, a couple um, minor additions, as well as uh, a rework um, of the parking lot. So if you go to next slide, please. So this is the existing site. It's on the south side of Euclid. We can just scroll through a few of these existing conditions uh, photos. This is a view from the east. It's a 10 story building built in the mid 1960s, originally built as a Holiday Inn. Um, it will be converted to a Delta Hotel by Marriott. And this is the view along Euclid as it stands today. Um, some the project includes a removal of that existing canopy and a new canopy that you see in the top left corner there. And so that's a good view, the east elevation um, the exterior work that will occur includes removal and replacement with of all the windows on the upper floors. <clears throat> Excuse me, the existing through wall air conditioning units will be removed and be replaced with internal air conditioning units. The glass and glazing systems on the 1st floor will be replaced. The existing area that's shown in white on the 1st floor that's brick is going to be replaced with. Aluminum and glass storefront. And then, as well, I mentioned that portico share will be removed and replaced. <clears throat> Next slide, please. The existing site 
um, access points are going to remain the same vehicular access from Euclid at the north and vehicular access from Prospect to the south. The parking lot will be resurfaced and restriped. And where we can, we're introducing some greenery and some landscape in the new site plan, which is the next slide. So you can see it, it gets greened up a little bit with some tree islands where we can fit them. Um, our parking is is less than one per room for the hotel. So it, we aren't over parked. The, there will be 188 guest rooms when following the renovation. And the on the north side and the south side, the existing uh, fencing, fencing will be removed and replaced with new fencing as well as landscaping along okay. those property lines. At the north, there's along the par uh, along the parking area, there are some existing planter walls that are in, in poor shape that will be removed and then replaced with perennial and grass landscaping along a new decorative fence. As well at the uh, north west corner, the outdoor patio area that's labeled there, that's an outdoor pool right now that will be filled in and the uh, that area will be opened up with a new decorative fence. There's a, currently a brick wall there that is in disrepair that will be removed. Um, can move to the next slide, please. Okay, so the north elevation facing Euclid, all, all of the existing concrete and uh, exposed structure that will all be repaired as needed and refinished. Um, there are areas that are partially painted and that are are failing that. So the entire there'll be an, a facelift to the entire project of the hotel tower. Um, there's some existing wall mounted signage that will be removed and then replaced with new Delta Hotel brand signage. And then along Euclid at the uh, pedestrian level, there are some existing raised planter walls that are in disrepair and will be removed and new landscaping will be provided. And then you can see on the left side of your screen, the north elevation of the new cantilevered canopy structure that is replacing that uh, portico share that will be demolished. To the right on that screen is the new decorative fence, which will open up that outdoor patio area to the pedestrian way um, along Euclid. And then on the left side of that screen, there's also a new ornamental fence along the parking lot, as well as a landscape bed um, continuous along that fence as well. Okay. All of these other notes, any of the brick that is currently, um, there's different colors of painting and everything, we will repaint that to blend in and match with the existing brick colors. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> next slide, please. Okay, so the east elevation, this is a view of now on that at the first floor, all of the storefront system that will be new along the ground plane and then as well the cantilevered portico share, which will consist of five columns. They are they will be clad in um, metal panels in a dark bronze color, contrasting the existing white structure of the building. On the left side of this screen is one of the additions, which is a service elevator tower. There is no service elevator in the in the building now, and one is required for um, the function of the hotel. So it will be located at the south side, which is left side of your screen, and it will be clad in brick to match the existing south elevation, which I think is the next slide will show the south elevation. Yes, so the south elevation is um, currently a brick facade and that service elevator tower that you see in the center with the new Delta brand signage will be clad in brick to match and it will run full height of the building. And then all of the work down at the one story will be repair and refinishing of existing masonry. Thank Next you. Slide. Yep. I think we have some renderings that we can, the west elevation is basically the same as the east. So we, we have a couple renderings that we can show and 
So this is a view from Euclid showing you three dimensionally what the new portico share will look like. It's got a curved underside <clears throat> with recessed lighting. There will be um, new up lighting added to the building. Um, there's currently up lighting on the tower now that some functions and some does not. That will be removed and replaced with new LED light fixtures. There is one monument sign proposed, which is to the left of this vehicular entrance on your screen there. I think there might be a better view of that on the next slide. It's a lower scale um, monument sign. Okay, I guess it doesn't show too well there, but this is a view across the parking lot of the east elevation, the new port of share, and then that elevator tower on the south is shown in that view as well. And there you can see the, the lower scale monument sign that will be new. There will be three flagpoles proposed opposite the entrance, as well as a large landscape bed sort of central to the parking lot. Okay. Are there any other renderings, uh, Marisa? There's a close-up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, commission members, any um, questions or discussion? Madam Chair, I did have a question. Is sure. this going to be a full-service hotel with banquet facilities, or is it just going to be um, the room, the rooms? Uh, yes. Uh, there currently is a ballroom in the hotel that will be repurposed into a divide, divisible meeting area, meeting room. It's not an overly large ballroom, but there is meeting space. And there will also be a restaurant and bar that primarily serves the hotel guests uh, within the hotel. Um, but there will be also food and beverage and it is a full service hotel. Okay. Uh, commission members, any comments or questions? There's landscaping plan as well. Um, I moved approval. Downing. And uh, just to clarify, is this final approval again? This is final approval. Yes. Okay. We Second. received final approval from Euclid Corridor yesterday. Second, okay. Luker. And and we just want real quick comment. I don't know if you guys remember, this used to be the Shangri-La Inn. This is where yep. business deals were conducted. So there's some history right. here. Respect yeah. it. <laughs> um, my only comment is, um, if you go back to the rendering, um, and I'm not going to require it, but if you go back up to the rendering that shows from Euclid Avenue, the first rendering, Maurice, um, I, I, the small brick kind of... Um, uh, can you keep going up, Maurice? Sure. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Which which slide did you want? Keep going. I'll tell you. If you keep going. One more. That. So uh, my question here is that from from a kind of vehicular level, I mean, I, I'm so glad you guys are renovating the hotel. So don't get me wrong. I love the project. It's much needed. It's been long overdue. So, um, but this small brick building that faces Euclid Avenue, mm -hmm. that is for me at the pedestrian scale. Um, and I know there's a signage issue, but, and you're putting a monument sign that doesn't show up here, but that oh, I can see it by the door. I just wonder if there's there might be an openness by staff to consider a some smaller signage or something on the blank brick facade that is up against the sidewalk. And the only reason I say that is that from a pedestrian point of view, um, what everyone is going to see is this little brick kind of bump out. So as a designer, August, I don't know what you think about that, but the idea of even a smaller kind of rendition of the Delta Hotel sign if it met code down at that level too, in addition to the monument sign or something, just because it's kind of a harsh pedestrian edge. Well, that's a good point, Madam Chair, because I walked that path for a lot of years because our offices used to be located and it, it just doesn't feel welcoming. So I think that would be a great addition. Motion, but if the applicants had interest, I think you'd know that the planning commission would be supportive, even if it's kind of additional signage to have the logo or the Delta Hotel smaller there along on the brick as well. So I just think it'll just add something that might help for pedestrians. Won't be so auto oriented. On behalf of the planning staff, we would welcome that. Thank you. 
Would you be okay, Christine, if we added that to the motion? Um, we certainly can consider it. Um, I think we also will need approval from the brand um, for any signage that we incorporate. So, um, but we can certainly take a look at it to bring something down to that pedestrian scale. I just can't guarantee that what we can okay. do and what we cannot do. I mean, for me, it could even just be the D, if you will. Mm -hmm. If you brought the D down too, it would right. help. Just something along there. That is something we can review with them. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion and a second. Um, can I ask the my colleagues if they would add um, consideration of a smaller sign at the pedestrian level? Yes, I, I'm uh, fine with adding that to the motion. Um, and then August, I think I think you seconded it. Second. Yes, I yes, Madam Chair. Except okay. Okay. Can I call the roll? Downing. Yes. Luker. Yes. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. All. Yes. Um, thank you. Motion carries. I'll ask that you report back to staff on that last okay. matter. Either way, um, and I think that I'd ask the planning director if you could um, sort of monitor if that's possible. Okay. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you. A Euclid quarter design review. This is 1830 East 82nd Street. Brandon again is here. Um, this was granted schematic approval with some conditions. Um, and um, I don't think I need to swear you in, Brandon, if you're the only one speaking. I would ask, though, that you solely focus on the conditions and you do not need to present the entire project again. Yeah, I'll be completely brief on this one. Uh, in fact, I think at the last motion, it was almost contemplated about us just working with staff uh, as we got to this next stage. So uh, next slide. Um, just the site, Brock, uh, Brookline and 80, East 82nd. Um, just south of Huff. Next couple of slides. It's just the context of the area. Um, the site itself. Next slide. Next slide. So site orientation, uh, the building siting didn't change. The only aspect of this that we uh, did make modifications for is the additional landscaping on the rear of the site to screen the parking from the adjacent. Um, a state's first street homes, which we added in addition to also during design review, it was noted to ask if we could um, add some landscape screening to the north and south of our property line, uh, which we agreed to as well um, to screen basically both uh, the, the parking lot from three sides um, with some minimal uh, low, lower landscaping. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Um, just some changes. Uh, it was asked and are not this project, but we presented another project at the same time uh, for these buildings to maybe get a little bit of an upgrade of material. Um, so we did work through that a little bit. The, the big change from a materiality perspective is we're using uh, from what was a split face CMU. Uh, it's going to be a half height um, masonry blend unit. Uh, so 4 inch by 16 inch, and it does give a really nice uh, variation in material. So it won't be a single. Masonry color uh, has a blend of some light grays and 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 some darker grays um, to to be able to uh, pronounce the, the lower portion of the building. It wasn't noted on this project, but it was something we wanted to make an adjustment towards. Um, and then the big item is here: is there were some eyebrows above the uh, white areas, uh, the board batten uh, on the front elevation. Uh, we got rid of those and changed the material to kind of create a little bit of a cap. Uh, it was well received at design review yesterday um, with that change. It'll be shown in renderings next. Uh, landscape plan has been unchanged around the building and foundation plantings. Next slide. Here's just the rendering. Um, so we showcased, we changed uh, the entryway uh, to have a, a metal siding, uh, black metal siding to kind of have a stronger and more pronounced uh, entry. Um, and then, as I said, the, the treatments of above the white uh, board and batten system with the horizontal gray um, material with a, a, a pronounced trim at that at that intersection. Um, next slide. 
and just another view of that. Next slide. I think that's it. Though. Here's just the renderings of the materials again. Uh, the the major noted change was just the the masonry and blend um, that was changed from being a full height CMU. I think that's it. Maybe there's a site lighting plan. So site lighting, um, perimeter uh, parking lot lighting, and then uh, some wall packs on the building, and then uh, balcony wall sconces, uh, and then we put some bollard lights uh, along the pathway entrances for the walk up units and the entrance off the street. And that is it. That's the previous uh, submitted uh, rendering that you guys saw last time. Commission members. Hi, Ma Madam Chair, I just like to, to thank Brandon for um, attempting to create some some animation on, on the at, at the pedestrian level with the walk ups. Um, it's you know it's it help it helps it helps with the neighborhood. So I think it's a pretty good, nice touch. Um, I agree. I agree on the corner too. Right. So. Exactly. You know, as I'm watching all these presentations, and maybe this is a comment for later, but I don't even know why it's relevant to show elevations. <laughs> because we're Versus a rendering, I guess, if someone I mean, had, some people don't have them now. We're presenting like we did in the 80s, right? And we, le we left a rendering for last because we put all our heart and soul in it. And so we, but at the end of the day, these convey a lot more, just a thought. Right, well, I mean, I'm sure local won't won't appreciate if we start eliminating all the designs. I know, but what? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, do you have any other comments or motion? I'll move approval, Downing. Second, Fluker. I have a motion and a second. This is for final approval. Uh, Michael, can you call the roll? Downing. Yes. Fluker. Yes. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Paul. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, this is uh, downtown flats design review 200 Cleveland Memorial Drive. This is the Amtrak exterior signage seeking final approval. Um, is okay, Ed three, zero, three, smoking trains, no hey, good morning. Ed Kim is present. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth is you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? I do. Um, I suspect you're somewhere, uh, so you can present quickly uh, and just get to the signage on this one. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you all to uh, the City Planning Commission for uh, allowing me to speak today. Uh, my name is Ed Kim. I'm the Facilities Development Manager for the Central Territory for our National Network. Uh, I manage uh, the Facilities Maintenance and Repair Program and Capital Development uh, for territory spanning from Ohio on the east end, Colorado to the west end, and Arkansas to the south and everything up north. So. Uh, here in the city of Cleveland, uh, our Cleveland station, we are actually proposing a modest uh, signage improvement project um, at our station along the shoreway. Um, and I'll just quickly go through the uh, whole uh, dot deck here for you. Uh, what we are proposing are six signs all together. Next slide, please. Uh, first off is a monument sign. It's a vertical monument sign that will be placed at the foot of the parking lot entrance. Um, this monument sign will be internally lit and uh, tied into existing power that we pay uh, the electricity for. Next slide. Uh, this, this is just images of uh, the current existing conditions of where the monument sign will go. Next slide, please. Uh, we do plan on installing a post and panel sign uh, for vehicular traffic to direct them off to the right, and it'll be right-handed directional driving uh, from the entrance. Next slide. Uh, this here is proposed location A of our pylon sign uh, at the northeast corner of the parking lot. Um, there is an alternate uh, location. Next slide, please. Uh, which will be uh, adjacent to our port share and then also uh, in front of the building. Uh, 
the logistics of running electricity is much easier and feasible if we place it adjacent to uh, the building there. Uh, this is an option that we have had our designers uh, include. We have not yet exercised this option, uh, but it is in the plan. Next slide, please. Uh, we do intend to place a customized uh, letter sign, station identification sign on top of the port cushion, uh, which would uh, provide greater illumination and location identification, especially pedestrians coming from the street. And next slide. Conversely, we're also having a platform identification sign placed on the top of the platform port of uh, And this, this is primarily intended for passengers on board our trains, which uh, I can uh, gladly say that uh, we are restoring uh, daily service to the Capital Limited uh, between Chicago, Cleveland, and D.C. Um, at the end of this month. So uh, this is a very nice inclusion. And then finally, we are going to place our uh, pedestrian friendly uh, uh, station identifier uh, along the brick facade of the building uh, adjacent to the main entrance. And that's all we propose. I'm sure I think you're, you're muted. mute. Lillian. I apologize. I just said any questions or comments. Uh, Madam Chair to staff, I assume this all meets zoning. Thank you, Mr. Fluker. I'm going to turn this over to Drew to, to share any comments that he may have. If Drew is on. Sorry about that. Yeah, I had a technical issue at that very moment. Um, thanks, Director. Yeah, we um, just wanted to let the Commission know that the planning staff would be interested in coordinating um, on some wayfinding to get to the site because right now the the proper way to get there if you're going eastbound on the shoreway is to exit at the Muni lot and backtrack west on South Marginal Road and um, the Mr. Kim knows that, that we're trying to do something to this effect too. So I uh, just wanted to bring that up that that really sharp exit and we could coordinate on, on making it more findable. It became very hard to hear, but to, to capture Drew's comments, uh, essentially, if, if you could show the overhead site plan, Mr. Kim, just to see where all the signage is. Um, there was a there was a particular staff comment about uh, that the preferred city route to exit is the eastbound route to Amtrak. Maurice, if you could point that out, if possible. Well, the preferred city route uh, to exit for Amtrak is further east of that overlay, but the immediate exit at, along the circle at the east end of our lot. That is, um, I suppose there was a DOT sign on that overhead frame just before uh, that exit, uh, but which was removed, um, that pointed down towards that exit uh, for the Amtrak station. Um, but uh, basically what we are tasked to do, uh, one is to improve the signage and the branding and, and, and wayfinding within our parcel. Um, but then also to work in collaboration with the city streets department and also ODOT to improve the trailblazers that are there, which we do provide to any municipality or agency for free with the uh, caveat that um, the departments install them themselves. So, um, but that is a subsequent layer to this project, but that will uh, come with the coordination with the appropriate uh, stakeholders. Okay, thank, thank you and noted. Uh, Mr. Kim, if you could also address Mr. Fluker's question about the zoning, does, does the signage as presented fit the zoning requirements, particularly the um, the one that is uh, up in the air? 
The uh, at this time there are no known issues with zoning. Um, however, at the same time, uh, Amtrak is a federal entity, and by 49 CFR, I'm going to cite this here. 49 CFR Chapter 24902, subsection J. Um, we are technically exempt from yeah. municipal code. So, yeah. Okay. But we don't. We Just don't like. We comment. don't like to exercise. Yeah, we don't like to exercise that though. But um, to my knowledge, our research and uh, we have not actually seen any infringement upon the current zoning requirements. Yeah. And, and that was just confirmed by uh, Shannon from our staff. So thank you. Oh, then you're not asking you. for permission, but we appreciate it. I, <laughs> I, I, I am moved, I moved to approve the set signage plan uh, with the caveat that um, Amtrak works with staff to provide better wayfinding to uh, direct folks. To the I second it, McCray Scott. Motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? I'll just say that I think more signage here is is needed. So I thank you for the improvements actually. Um, can we call the roll? Downing. Yes. Fluker. Yes. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Paul. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Um, I think we have a couple more downtown flats design review, the pine renovation. It's a three story building at 1720 and 1736 Columbus Road. Melissa, are you here to speak to this and anyone else? If I can swear you in. Uh, yes. uh, James. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth is you shall answer to the penalty of perjury. I do. Okay. Take it Nobody, away. Uh, this is James Asimus with uh, Real Life Real Estate Group. I also am uh, going to be contributing to this uh, okay. presentation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Great. So, uh, just giving a, a general introduction, uh, we're looking at uh, redeveloping uh, what's around 30,000 square feet over three buildings into a four story, 45 unit mixed use building with. Uh, uh, commercial space on the ground floor and uh, apartments on the second, third, and fourth floor. Um, repurposing what was a uh, site where they would assemble uh, caskets and some other industrial uses over the past. Uh, inside, taking advantage of the uh, masonry and a uh, number of spots and heavy timber to uh, to redo the inside into some, some really great apartments. Uh, we're really excited about this project, uh, our ability to retain a lot of the characteristics of the building and uh, um, add to it and add to a lot of the great redevelopment happening uh, around this area of the flats. With that, I'll pass it over to Melissa. Thanks, James. Um, the first couple of slides are just some photos of the surrounding area. So I don't know how much time that we spend on these, um, but this is the view of the back, the north side of the site, um, across the street, the street is the river um, and looking up Columbus Road. Um, this is towards the back of the building, some views from across from these various streets. Um, these bottom two photos are of our existing building um, from the street view. And then this, the first photo on this sheet is also of the front of our building. And the last two photos are photos of the rear of the building. This is an existing site plan showing the building um, and the current parking in the front of the building. Go ahead to the next slide. Our proposed site plan, um, we have been asked to remove the parking at the front of the building. Uh, we are proposing some parallel parking spaces in the rear of the building um, that will fit on the site in our, in our property line. Um, we have not yet shown any proposed streetscape, um, so we are working through that um, and what, what will be required, what we need to provide there. Uh, we do, just to um, address it here, we do only have five parking spaces because that is, um, as you can see, all we can fit on our space, on our property. Um, so we will be looking for a variance for that um, 
the owner is working on getting an agreement with an adjacent site for parking. Next slide. Um, the next few sheets are just demolition plans showing um, the scope of the demolition. Uh, we're planning on removing the masonry infill in all of the masonry window openings. Go ahead and flip to the next couple of them. Exciting. <laughs> Demolition elevations, again, showing that masonry infill being removed. You can see the, the existing chimneys, those will remain. The masonry will be repaired um, and repointed. Go ahead. The next slide. So this is our proposed elevation, the bottom elevation being the street facing elevation. You can see on the left and the right of the building, the existing masonry building remaining, all of those openings being filled in with new windows. And then the portion in the center, which we call the garage, uh, you know, used to be a garage looking structure, um, being restructured, um, new cementitious lap siding on that area, and then the rest of the building is proposed to be a cementitious panel system for all of the new. Uh, Madam Chair, if I can interrupt for a second, Dro just informed me that um, when they presented this at design review, there was a little problem with these slides, and maybe we could skip right to the renderings. Would that be a problem? No, that'd be great. Absolutely. Go ahead. There you go. It looks Much like easier that. to read. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, yeah, as you can see, existing masonry building on the right, the one-story masonry building on the far left, and then everything else is going to be new materials. Like I said, cementitious lap siding, cementitious panel system. We've got canopy at the front entrance. Um, we are we have storefront in that center portion. Uh, we are currently not meeting the glazing requirement for this. Um, urban overlay because it does require 75% um, glazing on the first floor for non residential uses. Uh, our current uh, percentage is at 59%, uh, but we, we are hesitant to modify the existing openings in the masonry. So we're trying to maximize in the center portion as much as we can, but we are going to have to ask for a variance for that because um, we, we just don't want to mess with that historic fabric of the masonry building. There's a couple more renderings. Yeah, they're all of the this front piece, um, but just in various views if you want to flip through. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, commission members, uh, any questions, comments? This is for conceptual approval. Is yes. that correct? Okay. So, and I also wanted to note there are um, existing photos over in the corner of the rendering. Just to give you some. Right. Ma um, Madam Chair, to staff, I'm, I guess I'm trying to understand why, why you know, zoning would impact this existing building as it relates to glazing. It is, it is an existing building, so um, somebody could opine on that so I could understand why. I guess there's no reason. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'll draw, draw is having some technical difficulties on a second. Uh, There is an upcoming map change here that's going to add an urban overlay. Certain glazing requirements. That's that's for. We can't hear you. At all. Uh, barely. It, it was a change where we changed this and, and added the urban form overlay, which has the 75 percent uh, glazing requirement on the ground floor, and uh, it does not take into account. Uh, an existing building, which would be a good reason for granting a variance in this case. Yeah, has has that already overlay passed to this district? Is this district already? Um, yes, I believe it was already mapped re just recently. Okay. Um, well, the, it, I agree with August. It's unfortunate. Um, I will say this is a super handsome project, and um, I think the nuances of it in terms of the middle portion and the the add additions and um, you know, it has a, a kind of, um, uh, I think the kind of project we want to see. So hopefully that Just helps quick, you with your variances. One quick update, Madam Chair and Mr. Fluker, is that uh, Dro is telling me that it has not actually been, uh, effect, it's not in effect yet. It's been passed 
but it's not effective yet. So because they're they're here now, uh, it will not take effect. Okay. Well, then I think to the applicant, it's to your benefit to move this project forward before it's passed, just so you don't have to um, go through the variance process. Um, I mean, it's a nice project. You're going to have our motion. I also um, uh, would say that um, if you go back to the to to their, um, you know. I certainly am comfortable with the fact that this could go back to staff and doesn't really need to come back to us, but um, I'll leave it to commission members. I, I just one other comment relative to. To um, the um, overlay, I, I don't, I don't again, I, I'm just trying to figure out how you avoid. Because the overlay, in my opinion, is the exception, then you ask for an exception for that exception. Doesn't process in my meager brain, but anyhow, um, I'm going to move to approve a, a project um, with the caveat that um, the applicant work with staff to, to work out the details and, and not be required to come back to our commission. And I'll second that, Downing. Uh, so the motion is second. Um, any other comment? Um, okay, I can call the roll. Downing. Yes. Zucker. Yes. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Paul. Stop I think me. she had to leave. Yeah. Um, so just to clarify, um, uh, you will still have to go back to local design review, um, but then staff can sign off of it. And, and unless there are any issues, it doesn't have to come back to this commission. Um, thank so you. thank you. So fabulous project. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, the next item, I think we have two more. Um, uh, if you could put it up, uh, Maurice, I believe it's the Jacobs Pavilion. Maurice. Does anyone Sorry, know? Did you yeah, did, can you go to the next item, Jacob's Pavilion? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. There was a glitch in the world for a second. <laughs> Multitasking um, here. <laughs> really. Uh, 2000 Sycamore Street. This is the Jacob's Pavilion uh, renovation. It's seeking final approval. Um, Jesse is here from LDA. Anyone else from the project team? Um, I need to swear you all in. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? As you shall answer to the penalty of perjury. You. Okay, just you. Just me. Okay, yep. Good. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this is the Jacobs Pavilion at Nautica. Um, so this next upcoming season, AEG will be operating out of the venue instead of Live Nation, and AEG just wants to kind of rebrand the site a little bit. Um, this slide here shows some of the inspiration we're looking at, like a porter call. They want to kind of pull in a little bit of the shipping container uh, materiality throughout the site. Uh, we're using uh, mostly uh, metal siding and some wood accent panels throughout uh, the renovation. Uh, if you want to go to the site plan, which is the next slide. Um, so there's uh, several buildings on the site. So as we go through, we'll kind of go one building at a time. Um, but starting with the box office area at the top right, um, there's an old trailer that they used to use as a box office that was kind of a pinch point at the main entry to the right. Um, that is getting removed and the box office is moving to uh, uh, the adjacent building over there. Um, we're removing some temporary tent structures uh, where you see like the tent merch and gateway area and providing a permanent structure there. Um, the temporary merch building that you see on that site is a, it's like a roll away uh, actual shipping container they're reusing. And that will be kind of moved around here and there uh, depending on the event uh, and the needs of the, of the each individual event. Um, and there's five different concession buildings scattered throughout the site. Um, those will all be reclad in new materials. Um, the bleachers, the three main bleachers areas, they will be touched up with a slightly new pink color. Um, and I just want to point this out because I'm sure this will come up. There is going to be a temporary trailer style ADA restrooms that will be installed for uh, the first year 
Um, this kind of came up in the last meeting. So after the first year, the client's going to install permanent ADA restrooms on the site. They just kind of want to make sure they get the right location, the right flow, um, and, it's, and the, with the trailer, they can kind of move it around a little bit and see what makes the most sense. Um, there are three restroom trailers in the back that will get repainted. They're already uh, metal siding. And some of the small buildings, the dressing rooms, production trailers, those will all get reclad in new metal siding. And then we also have a new ramp uh, going up to the stage, replacing a stair. This ramp will serve mostly for getting equipment up and off, uh, up to the stage easier, as well as the ADA access for talent that gets onto the stage. Um, so if we want to go to the next slide, and we'll start with the box office. Um, top left is the material we're actually using is the pack clad uh, uh, exterior wall panels, um, stained wood siding as accent pieces. Uh, top right is an existing photo of what the box office kind of looks like now. And what you see in the floor plan, basically half the to the left of the floor plan, the U shape used to be all concessions. So we're basically cutting that in half and using the top half as the box office with new ticket windows, including a new accessible ticket window. Um, and the rest will remain concessions and the bathrooms and cooler remain as is. And there are some 2D uh, elevations of just the new cladding and signage. If you want to go to the renderings next. Next slide. Um, so here's kind of what you'll see as the main entrance. We had new halo lit signage um, on the building as well as all the new buildings will or all the buildings will receive a, uh, a down a linear down light along the whole perimeter to help light up the boxes so they can kind of be visible from across the river during even non-event times. Uh, and you can kind of see some of the wood access at the ticket windows and then the recess where the bathrooms are. All the extra wood, I think there's a lot of metal cladding that will all get painted to match the metal siding as well. Um, next slide. And this is the other view of the box office here. You see the teal color uh, as an accent piece. We're painting the interior of the spaces with an accent color and some of the doorways. Um, so you'll see the accent color through the windows uh, just to provide a little bit of color through uh, all the different buildings. Um, next slide. Uh, this is the gateway area. So this is where the uh, security checkpoint is uh, for the site. You can see to the, the image to the top right, they had all these temporary uh, tent structures there. So we're going to provide something more permanent. And what we're looking at doing is playing off the jackknife uh, kind of bridge concept that is kind of anchors both points of the West Bank. Um, so this is kind of a structure that resembles the shape and style of the jackknife bridge and it kind of raises up in motion to create three separate structures. Between the structures will be a uh, removable fabric awning uh, just to help shed some water away from the security area uh, so that equipment doesn't get wet and it all goes to the right side here. Um, there will be uh, LED downlighting strips attached to the bottom of each uh, structure that provide lighting under there as well. If anybody has any questions as I go through each of these sections, uh, happy to answer them. Um, these are some examples of the concession stands. They're all basically built the same and will be uh, designed the same way. We're removing the uh, the gray kind of canopy awnings over top the concession windows and replacing with the new uh, awning system. Um, as well as those, you can kind of see the Bud Light the light boxes. All the light boxes are being removed from the site, and they will be replaced with the kind of more elegant signs that are not, you know, internally lit boxes. Here's a rendering of uh, what the concessions look like. So you can see the wood accent panels, the new canopies, which will have, which the wood accent will continue to the underside of those. Um, and then the top will be a metal seam siding that matches the same color as the uh, aluminum siding on the sides. And you can see the accent color kind of popping through when the when the overhead rolling doors are pulled up. Um, you can see the continuous sliding going across the top of the concession stands as well. If you want to go to the next slide. Um, this is specifically for the bleachers. So you can see we're not changing the color dramatically, but we think the new uh, aquarium Sherman Williams color will kind of match the aesthetics and the theme that the new the new lease is going for for the venue. So they're going to repaint all the, you can see all the blue, uh, repaint the new color. Under the bleachers, we're going to do all new lighting underneath the bleachers. There'll be a combination of RGB and white LED lighting. Um, the bathrooms will be repainted and get an accent color. This is kind of a sketchy view, just showing you know, a different color of uh, RGB that they could use to highlight a theme to, on a particular show. 
Uh, if you want to go to the next slide and show the bathrooms a little bit more up close. And then the bathrooms will be painted with, it'll be accent color at the entryways. Uh, they'll be painted white with black halo lit signage to indicate men's and women's restrooms. The stairs will be new. Currently, there's their wood stairs, and we'll be providing new metal stairs with uh, co-compliant handrails and access to the doors. We can go to the next slide. Um, these are examples of what the dressing rooms look like now uh, under snow cover. And you can see that we'll be recladding these in the metal siding as well. We're also adding additional windows uh, to these that face the river and the east bank of the flats. And they get, again, they get the same treatment as the rest of the buildings with the continuous LED downlights, um, some halo lit signs to indicate which trailer is which. And I think the final one is the ramp. Um, so the ramp, uh, the bottom portion will be constructed of concrete. We will provide a skirting that is the same metal panel as the rest of the buildings to conceal the wood framing underneath. And we'll do a metal handrail and guardrail leading up to the stage. And that is the last element of the renovation. Uh, I do have uh, some renderings without the sketchy filter. I know that was a comment in the last meeting. So I do have those if we want to look at those, if the board felt um, they need to just see something a little different to get the, the idea across. Uh, questions or comments from commission members? Um, Madam Chair, I did have a question. Are there any handicap accessible bathrooms? Yes, a, a temporary trailer that will provide accessible bathrooms. As you can see, all the current existing bathrooms are all like three feet off the ground because they are mobile trailers that were parked there and made permanent. So the client is providing a temporary trailer that will be ADA compliant. And then next year, their goal is once they kind of finalize the position that they want to put it in, they will provide a permanent ADA restroom restrooms multiple stalls. Perfect. How long is their commitment? I think it's I think it's 10 plus years. I'd have to double check that, but it's a long I think it might be my thinking is 15, but it's at least 10 years. So they'll be here for a while. Thank you. I move approval downing. Second Fluker. A motion and a second. Um, so uh, any other comments or questions? It's nice to see some upgrades and some uh, changes. So, um, and I hope this summer it's well utilized. Uh, they got a full slate. They got a busy couple months coming up here in uh, May and June. So, good. Um, you can call the roll, Michael. Downing. Yes. Luker. Yes. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, I think our final item is a special presentation. Um, this is part of the Euclid corridor, but this is Asia Town bus shelter seeking final approval. Uh, 3834 Payne Avenue. I think Karis is here to present from Midtown. Um, is there anyone else with you, Karis? Yep, Mandy from the GCRTA is on as well. Okay, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? That's for both of you. I do. Yes. Yep. I do. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I think Tara, did you want to uh, kick us off? Sure. Um, Hi, this is Tara Peters, the uh, public art coordinator, city planning. Um, this project, the public artwork on RTA shelter did go to Euclid corridor design review yesterday and was approved unanimously. Um, I wanna express my support for the project as it reimagines uh, an Asian American artist uh, work that was removed from Asia town to accommodate uh, new, new traffic um, new traffic plans in the area and is now being reimagined for the bus shelter. The only comment from Euclid Corridor uh, was a concern with air bubbles, but um, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and see the presentation from Karis, and then we can get into that if there's any questions, but I believe she will be addressing it. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tara. Hi, everyone. Um, 
As Tara mentioned, I, I will run through this quickly. I believe you've seen this artwork before. First, I just wanted to know, we believe that this project aligns with uh, the neighborhood vision plan that um, this commission adopted at the end of last year. Um, this map kind of shows the proposed artwork in context with other artwork in the neighborhood, both existing and planned. You can go to the next slide, please. So this was the um, the utility back box artwork, and you can actually see um, the third one with the koi's. That's the artwork that has been reimagined for this project. Next slide. The location of this bus shelter is at Asian Evergreen Apartments, which is a senior apartment complex with about um, 60 older adults um, uh, of Asian descent that primarily speak Cantonese, Mandarin, and Korean, and have expressed um, excitement about this project. So these are just a couple um, context photos of the bus shelter. Um, if you want to just kind of roll through the next few. Yep, this is the existing bus shelter. And the uh, plans for the bus shelter. This is an example that the RTA has, has done in, in different areas. This bus shelter is in Lakewood using the transparent heat applied vinyl wrap. And I believe the next slide shows the, um, this is a local artist, Mitzi Lai, um, an example of previous artwork. And then the, this next slide shows here uh, the proposed base artwork, which was on the utility box, and she's kind of adapted it to this bus shelter. So this next slide is the rendering on the bus shelter. And I do want to note the artist was very mindful of safety considerations, particularly because this is located outside of a senior apartment complex. And so she wanted to incorporate enough clear area so it's very clear from both sides if somebody is in the bus shelter and um, with also retaining visibility um, both inside and towards the outside and from the outside. And with that, I'll sit, uh, Mandy, did you want to add any comments from the RTA's perspective? We're very pleased to be working with Midtown and Asia Town on this project, and we did have an RTA team review the project, and we think it's going to provide some good visibility and in and out of the shelter, as well as a really wonderful amenity for our riders and also contributing to the streetscape. Commissioner Mappers, any questions or comments? I think this is awesome. Every bus shelter should reflect some some sort of art and, and represent the community or neighborhoods. So let's go for it. And is I'll, that a motion? Yes, <laughs> I move to approve this wonderful piece of art. <laughs> and I agree with August, and I'll second it. <laughs> motion and a second. Uh, can we call the roll? Downing. Yes. Luker. Yes. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Um, motion carries. Uh, meeting is adjourned, um, but I'll ask uh, the director um, if she has any closing comments or any thoughts after her first. Is it a week or two? Two weeks. Is that week? Week three. Week three. Okay, week so, three. Thank you to the commission. Um, just a, a word to you and the public. Uh, I'm working currently to make sure that the planning commission meetings are efficient and that each case is purposeful. Um, and so I am in the midst of experimenting and redesigning how uh, we both internally work with the agenda and making sure that we review things properly beforehand, as well as ensuring that uh, the committee and the commission is aware of any um, uh, the agenda flow. Uh, I intend to move this public forum more towards a, a place where we can discuss planning issues overall. I heard that as comments from the commission prior to my post and uh, look forward to uh, introducing more topics of discussion, um, planning, planning elements or updates specifically regarding the citywide plan update as well as uh, other major projects um, that are coming down the pipeline. Um, so with that, I'm looking forward to continuing to partner with you to the commission and then also um, presenting more to the public. That's all. Um, uh, I think August might have his hand up. Do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm 
Madam Chair, to the staff, I, as I was trying to think in Joyce's vein, how we improve what we do, I was wondering if we could would consider adding a couple of things to the docket under each item. That, that would be the ward and the council person, um, the service area and the CDC um, associated with that service area. I think that would be incredibly helpful for people who watch this and for, I believe, the commission members. Sure. We'll take note of that. Uh, we'll have Michael Bozak add that to his, uh, his list of things to do when he releases the agenda. Thanks. I think also we don't have to decide today, but um, just would love to hear in the next few weeks what the administration or how you might feel about if and when we get back to in person meetings and um, that we think about that um, over this next uh, few months. Sure. Uh, we will we will discuss with the staff and uh, let you know what the schedule looks like. Okay. Can I add something to that, Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. and, and, yes. Um, and, and can we invest in some um, 2022 technology to make your jobs easier as you present this? Um, um, you know, it, in person. <laughs> and I don't think it'll cost a lot of money. Just here, here. Are you speaking about hybrid technology so that there can be both in person and virtual? Yes, and. And the manner in which we make the presentations, I, there's there's wireless keyboards and all types of wonderful stuff that don't cost that much that would improve your delivery. Yeah, I do think Joyce, your point too about um, although something has been lost because we're not in person as a commission and we can't have the dialogue we used to have. It's been harder on Zoom. On the flip side of that, I think more people have been able to watch these meetings on YouTube and participate in a variety of ways. And it's made the meetings more accessible publicly. So um, so I guess that my question is if we are gonna be back in person eventually, if there is some way that they still can be streamed uh, for the public, just to think about that. Yes, and it is our intention to continue the streaming service. So yeah. I think what that means is that we'll be working on hybrid technology for the conference room where we usually meet. And uh, in fact, I think there's discussions about how we can sort of redesign that area so that it accommodates technology and people better. So. And I think August, that's what you were talking about was room 514. Yeah, yeah like I, yes, I totally get it. <laughs> You're preaching to the choir here. <laughs> I, I, there's one item I would like to bring up that greatly disturbed me today in that first case concerning the of the party center and and it occurred to me that as a community we need to do better at educating folks and i think there's a there's a pathway to start educating the cdc so they can educate their business community um so we can avoid things like this because quite frankly they allowed this to get out of hand, um, and and you know there's there's some culpability on both sides. And I just I, I'm not going to unpack a social moment here, but um, I just think it, a lot of that could have been avoided. Thank you. Okay, August. I think on behalf of the administration, uh, certainly we're working to clarify our processes. And uh, the city deserves more. The city deserves more because uh, we are we want to be committed to transparency and fairness and equity. And so what that means is that we need to be much more upfront and open about what the steps are in order to uh, get a use permit, whether you're a landlord or a tenant. Um, and so we're actually under sort of a internal review of the permitting process as well as how to communicate things much more clearly um, to an audience, whether that's through the website or through videos. Um, but I certainly agree that there's quite a few structural and operational things that need to be addressed um, so that we can be the best city that we can be because we, we do want to support landlords and we do want to support tenants and we want to support small business owners. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, there were just so many different layers of information misunderstanding all wrapped up into one 
quite complex situation. So that's a good point, Joyce. I think that's when it gets personal because there's no framework to rely on. So you attack one's character. And that's really what was happening there, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, I, and I do think that the length of time, uh, the twists and turns and uh, various operational things, uh, it, it all contributed. And so, uh, again, as Shannon presented in, in the beginning, I think our job really as the staff and the administration is to ensure that the process is fair. Um, whether it's during the commission meetings themselves, uh, that there's due process, but also before and after. So I think that's definitely something that we'll take in and continue to work on um, because of our commitment to fairness and equity. So. Yep. Okay. Thank you all. And um, we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.